This is Seymour Rocks uh, reporting from Down Under. Um, most of you will realise by now that there's been a bit of a hoo-ha uh, on, um, on the internet with uh, the release of, um, of videos by uh, Yale University and USGS, as well as this latest one by uh, Dr. Dr. Mann. Um, so I thought I'd like to uh, discuss this briefly. So just uh, to see what's in the background, this is this is the reality. This is what's happening on the ground. It's not from some computer model. Admittedly, it's a re-analyze analysis. Uh, but this is this is what we're actually seeing. So let's just um, go forward. For the first thing I would like to do is to read uh, something that Jennifer Hines, who wrote the uh, the, meth the Arctic Methane Monster um, uh, some years ago, and is one of the best uh, citizen scientists we have on, on this, even though she doesn't have any letters after her name. Anyway, she wrote the following, uh, which stimulated me to make this uh, video. Methane misinformation. Michael Mann uses the same techniques as denialists and Donald Trump. Instead of addressing any of the issues, he resorts to name-calling of catastrophists, one step up from alarmists. He also relies on conspiracy theory to explain the reason that people might say that methane emissions are a clear and present danger, i.e. that the evil conspirators are serving the interests of the petroleum industry. Well, if he's right, then Guy McPherson and Sam Carano must have a very big Swiss bank accounts. Well, here's another conspiracy theory. Michael Mann is a CIA plant engaged in a classic misinformation campaign. Spot on, Jennifer. One inference is that whoever they are getting increasingly worried about the methane threat meme and want to nip it in the bud. But they have made a terrible strategic mistake. It would have better served their interest to allow the, cons the public's complacency to keep the issues smothered. Now they are raising it without knowledge of the research into cascading feedback loops and the nature of exponential change as us lot have at our disposal. By making the first move, they have exposed their weakness. Uh, I apologize for my reading of that. Uh, it's not terribly clear. But let's go to uh, the man himself, Michael Mann, and let's see uh, kind of what he has to say. Uh, yeah, I avoided looking at this for a while. Anyway, this is... Uh, Michael Mann. Certain aspects of the climate change problem that for some reason have been seized upon by sort of the, the catastrophists, um, people who sometimes seem like they actually want to believe that we are committed to the, the, the extinction of uh, the human race. Um, oh, really? Oh, that must explain why I feel grief uh, just about every day of my life. Uh, I wonder if you've been uh, uh, walking in the mountains and the forests and have got away from your barbecue uh, so that you have an idea of what's actually uh, happening out there. And there is this movement, as you know, and there's some almost cult-like figures in that movement who have um, you know, declared that we have only you know, 10 years until humans are extinct and there's nothing we can possibly do about it. And if that were really true, then if there, there, there were no agency in the actions that we take and that our policymakers uh, take, then um, it's really uh, a very uh, convenient framing for polluting interests and politicians in their pay. Um, and so it actually leads us uh, to the same place as outright denial of climate change itself. And unfortunately, one of the components of 
this sort of uh, catastrophism, um, this uh, prophecy of, of, of inevitable doom that is promoted by, by some individuals. Um, one of the components of that is this idea that there's a methane bomb, that there's so much methane um, that uh, is um, you know, previously stored in the permafrost and in the coastal shelves of the Arctic Ocean, um, and, and, and so much of it now is going to be destabilized and escape into the atmosphere, that it's going to double or triple the warming, and again, will lead to uh, utter uh, doom um, on our part. Uh, Oh, yeah. So, Michael Mann, uh, this is just the figment of imagination of of uh, people in a death cult who want us all to die. And it's got nothing to do with science, eh? Uh, well, we'll be going into that uh, in a little while. And interestingly, when you take the promoters of that bad science, that pseudoscience, to task... Um, their response is almost as visceral and angry as the sorts of responses you encounter from climate change deniers. Yeah, well, of course. Some of us, unlike you, uh, are actually grieving for the demise uh, of, of, the, um, of the living planet, and we do so every day of our lives. So uh, is it inappropriate for us to be angry? Um, they seem to be psychologically invested in the notion that our peril is inevitable. And when you challenge them on it, and, and for good reason, because the science doesn't support this, the best carbon cycle scientists who have studied this problem say, yeah, there's a certain amount of methane that we it could be mobilized and it will add to the warming, but it's a small contribution compared to the warming we are causing by the burning of fossil fuels. And so it have you seen, have you, do you go onto the CAMS website, do you look at any of the actual research which is showing uh, the methane just coming out like unprecedented levels, never been seen before uh, on this planet? It's a cop-out, right? It's, it's sort of a free pass for polluters to say, oh no, it, it isn't even the CO2 from fossil fuel burning anymore that we have to worry about. It's the inevitable release of huge amounts of methane that we can't do anything about now. Um, and I have become convinced that while there are many people of um, you know, goodwill, uh, well-meaning, who have bought into this framing, it's being fanned. The, the, the flames of that movement are being fanned by the same polluting interests who are promoting outright climate change denial because it feeds a similar narrative of, um, or at least um, it supports an agenda of inaction. Yeah, well, there you are. That's uh, Michael Mann. Uh, I don't know what you think, but I think that's more of a political statement. It's got nothing to do with, uh, with science. Uh, so let's just uh, go to someone who I do regard as a scientist. Uh, I call her these days she who must not be named uh, because Natalia Shachova and her uh, colleagues uh, Igor Similetov and others have just been uh, whitewashed out of the whole equation. And, uh, of course, Michael Mann wants to paint the picture that there's no scientific basis for any of this. Well, let's just see. Tokens of Walt over there. There is a potential risk that if warming continues, the larger, maybe a great and massive amount of methane could be released from this Arctic shell. Of course, there is a potential risk. And in terms of potential risk, uh, I would say that the Siberian Arctic Shelf is the most potential because, as we said, the carbon pool is huge and the, the water shell is very shallow and the warming occurs stronger than in different areas of the world ocean. And, of course, it is a potential risk. And where the sea ice should be about 2 meters thick, it was 40 centimeters thick. That means that the processes, the, all the processes that serves, they serve destabilization. Shortly speaking, we do not like what we see there. Absolutely do not like. So that's Natalia Shokhova, who um, actually uh, 
does some uh, real research that is amazingly uh, published in in scientific papers, even though it doesn't get any. I haven't seen any reference to her ever in the mainstream media. It's not cited by anyone. So I think that the um, the uh, uh, the term uh, "she who cannot be named" is entirely uh, appropriate. So let's have a look at uh, uh, the great Michael Mann, um, who I mean. You know, I have to admit, he's, he, he, he does have a pedigree. Uh, there's this, for instance, the hockey stick. He was responsible for the most controversial chart in science. So how does someone who came up with something like this end up writing trash like this? Controlling future summer weather extremes still within our grasp. And uh, let's just, I, I did open his, um, his, 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 uh, his paper, and we'll just go, uh, oh, wait a minute, uh, no, that's not it, I'll go, to, doesn't look very much like a scientific paper to me, but never mind. Anyway, let's go to his conclusion. Aerosols effect on regulating temperatures. However, greenhouse gases are not the only consideration when looking at the future of the Earth's climate. Although the US and Europe have switched to cleaner coal burning methods which removes aerosol generating pollutants from emissions, many other areas of the world have not. Aerosols are particles suspended in the air. Oh, didn't know that. Uh, if these countries through mid-century clean to cl uh, switch to cleaner coal building burning technology then the mid-latitude areas of the world will warm and arctic amplification will diminish this will occur because the aerosols especially in the uh, mid-latitudes where there is abundant sun cool the earth by reflecting heat away from the planet Without these aerosols, that area of the Earth will warm, mitigating any further increase in QRAs, whatever they are, as the difference in warming between the Arctic and the mid-latitudes diminishes. However, by mid-century, once the aerosols are no longer produced, greenhouse warming once more dominates uh, climate. Curtailing the burning of fossil fuels can prevent an increase in persistent summer weather temp extremes. Though the rate of occurrence of summers like 2018 will likely persist. Quote, the future is very much in our hands when it comes to dangerous and damaging uh, summer weather extremes, said man. It's simply a matter of our willpower to transition away from fossil fuels to renewable energy. Also working on this project, Sonia K. Miller, Programming Analysis, blah, 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 etc. Uh, so, yeah, well, what can we say? Uh, so, uh, Dr. Mann has never heard of Natalia Shachova, I bet he has, um, and he's never heard of the aerosol masking effect, other, otherwise known as uh, uh, global dimming. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the Michael Mann who's warning us about the catastrophist is really, in my mind, a fantasist. Anyway, that's uh, enough of a rave from me. This is Seymour Rocks uh, from Down Under.